Hi, it's Mike with JetAdmin, and in this video I'll show how you can build a custom functional CRM or any front-end for your Superbase. I'll also show you how to enable multi-tenancy so you can turn your internal CRM into a partner sales portal really fast. And we'll not do any coding for any part of the app, and we'll finish the app in less than 10 minutes. Alright, let's get started. On top, we have a dashboard where we can see the stages breakdown and departments breakdown. Scrolling down, we can see our deals here and we can first of all filter our deals here by, uh, for example, a close date and by the owner. And we can move the deals down the funnel. So when we move this opportunity from negotiation to proposal, the status is going to change. Great. And finally, we can edit our deals. So we can click into the specific card and we can see the deals detail, this particular deals detail, and we can change some data. For example, we can add an expected close date. Great, now let's build this app. So I already have my data prepared in Superbase. So I have my contacts and I have my deals. Contacts and deals are related. So within the deals table, I have the contact ID, which is already pointing to the contacts table. This is the foreign key. So now let's uh, connect our Superbase instance to JetAdmin. Now, when we log in into our app or we just sign up for JetAdmin, we will see uh, this dashboard where we can add a new app. We have the list of apps here and I'll just click a new app here. And creating that. We can skip that. Now we have this model that prompts us to choose the integration and obviously we'll go with Superbase even though we can connect multiple resources. So we have several options here, how we can connect. I'll go with, a, with the easiest one. I'll just need to uh, insert the credentials here and that's gonna be it. You can find your Superbase credentials here. You go to project settings, you go to your database and here you can see your database settings uh, and you just can easily copy and paste those credentials into your JetAdmin project. All right, now I do exactly this and now I need to only click add resource and the connection is going to be almost ready. Now here we can start with one of the templates to make our life easier or we can go with a blank app and just build our application from scratch. And here's our data, it looks great. So we have contacts and we have deals and we can check also and see that all the Schema has been correctly imported, so we have uh, we have the field types imported correctly. So here, for example, we have the number, and it's been fetched as a number, and as well here we have the link to record. So we've uh, specified this in the Superbase as a foreign key that points to the context collection, and here it has been uh, fetched correctly. And as this data is related, we can do right away lots of cool operations like creating lookup and rollup fields and we can drill into our foreign key here and have access to all the related collections. Now, all the changes that we make here in the builder with the data will be reflected in the app. So that's the whole point of this data editor. So we'll do a few adjustments here. So for example, our status probably should be displayed as, as a select field. And we don't want to do this over and over again in our UI. So we'll do it here. We just go edit field and choose, instead of text, we'll just find a select field type. Great. And we'll just uh, load the options from our resource, from Superbase and from deals. And we'll just choose the status. What it will do essentially is just pick up on all the unique values here and generate uh, the select options. Okay, choose status here and choose status here. Okay, click generate. Awesome. And right away it's rendered as a select component and it's be, uh, it will be rendered as such in, the, in our app when we'll be building uh, our application. I'll quickly do the same with the owner uh, just for the sake of 
once again, making my life easier inside of the app builder. Great, so here it is. Uh, we'll be able to change the colors later. So at this point, we'll just move and create a new page. So this is the page section where you can create as many pages as you want. Uh, we'll need just one at this point. And I'll just choose the blank template here because I want to show you how to build this whole thing from scratch. All right. Now let's drag and drop all the relevant components here and kind of uh, create a prototype uh, of what our application will look like. And we'll, we'll start with the bar chart. So this is our bar chart. Great. And we'll also need a pie chart. There we go. Great. Uh, now on the bottom section here, uh, I have my Kanban, my filter and the form that will allow me or an end user to, to edit some deals. All right. So I'll find Kanban first, drag and drop it here. And I'll also drag and drop the form. Okay. So now, and the last thing that's left here is the filter. So we'll drag and drop the filter. We'll drag and drop it on top of our Kanban because uh, we want this filter to apply only to the deals in our Kanban board, right? Now, the next step is we need to connect our data to the, all those UI elements. And we'll once again start with the charts. We select the chart and we have all the settings that we'll need here on the right side, including our data settings. So we'll drill down into our database and we'll choose here, we have a demo data, we'll choose our Supervase instead, and we'll choose deals. Great. Uh, now it's not configured yet, so we will need to uh, set how we exactly would like to aggregate data, and I'll just want the number of records and uh, which property or field we'll group by. In our case, it's going to be status. And we'll do a little bit of customization here. Uh, first of all, we'll need to change this style here and we'll go here back to the main uh, panel and we'll proceed to the display section here and we can change the title or label here. It's gonna be stages. And let's say we want to change the color of this graph. We can also do that easily in JetAdmin with just a few clicks. We'll go here into display and we specify the color here. Let's uh, pick this one. Okay, looks nice. Uh, we'll do the same with the pie chart. Looks good. Okay, let's move down to our Kanban board and the filter. Uh, let's start with the Kanban board. Uh, so what we'll need to do here, uh, it's already been generated, uh, but it's been generated on the demo data. So we'll change it to our super base. And so we'll need to change the collection and its deals. And we once again, we'll need to specify what field we'd like to group by. And in our case, it's gonna be status or stage. So now we have all these stages, but they are not in the right order. So to change that, we'll go back. And as you can see, we have all our kind of columns here and we can kind of drag and drop them to reorder. Great. Now this looks like there are too many fields here. So we will adjust the number of the fields that we'd like to display within each card. So we go uh, scroll down here and we can show or hide certain fields. So I don't need priority, owner, owner email, accounts, and I would like to see the expected close date. Great. Now we need to configure this filter and bind this filter to our deals kind of board. Okay. We click onto the filter and here we right away can see a magic button that allows us to quickly bind different components. So we click on it and this is our list, uh, which is the Canva board deals. These are already bound. So we'll need to just add the filters and I want to be able to filter by expect a close date and I want to see expected close date greater than or equals. Okay. And I will want to uh, also filter by the owner and I'll just choose owner equals. Okay. And right away, uh, as you can see all the changes that we made in the data editor, for example, configuring this owner field type, uh, it's already reflected in the UI. So we don't have to do any adjustments here. It's already the select component. 
All right, now I'll just adjust names because they are too long. I'll go here and I'll just uh, change it to close date after. And for owner uh, is going to be just just owner. Okay, looks good. And I can also adjust to make it a little bit bigger. This looks nice. All right. Now, the probably the last part here is to bind this form. First, generate this form and then bind this to the deals Kanban board so we can pick the deal and be able to edit this deal, All right? So we click on the form and we follow the same route. We choose our resource and choose our collection. And right away, when we deal with actions, we have all the CRUD actions automatically generated based on our schema. So we don't have to do anything about it, just choose the right one. In our case, we want to update our records, update our deals, and we can either bind this component first or just generate it. I'll just go with the generating it. All right, looks good. Uh, I can once again hide certain fields that I don't want here. Uh, And I can also rearrange these fields within the form to make it look a little bit more user-friendly. Okay, looks good. Now, in my case, I don't want the users, the end users to this app to be able to change the opportunity name. So I can make it read-only or I can uh, use another option, which I'll go with is just conditional disable. I'll just type in the static one, which will uh, automatically make this disabled. Now, there are a few things that slaps to do here. And the first one is to fetch uh, those values into the form from the selected cards. So the way I do it here is I click onto the form and I can navigate through the hierarchy to the form from pretty much any place wherever I click in the form. And then I can go to, I go to this section, fill the form with data and I drill down into it. And here, uh, this form is already linked to the deals uh, collection from Superbase. And the only thing we need to do here is to pinpoint the ID, the unique identifier. So we'll grab the ID from this uh, selected car here and filter this form by this ID. We'll do this with filters. We click uh, select ID, ID equals, and then we click this F uh, binding model that allows us to pretty much reference anything, any dynamic value or token from anywhere in the app. In our case, uh, we'll need the deals uh, Kanban board and select the card. That's the function that's already available within JetAdmin. And we'll just use the ID, which is a primary key as well. Okay, uh, let's see how that works. Works great, awesome. Now we have to make this button also change the right record, the, the selected one. So we will do, we follow the same or similar process here, but for the action. So what form we'll do, we click into this and we'll just specify this ID and we'll follow a similar process. We will just fetch it from deals, select the cards, ID. Great. Now, the last thing that's left here is to make sure that when we move the cards or the, our deals down the funnel, the status of this card is being changed. And the way we do it here, here is through actions. So we select the deals table and we go into this actions section. And you got lots of options here, but we'll need card moved to column. Okay. And you got all the pre-built operations that you can choose from. In our case, we'll just need to change the data, to change the record. So we'll choose run operation and choosing Superbase and choosing deals again, updating records. So here we follow the same process. Uh, we We'll need to specify this is the current component, all the options available for the current component, which is the Kanban board, and we'll need to choose current card. So this is the card that's being moved. And once again, we reference the ID. And we'll need to specify the status here. So the status has to come from the column that we drop our card in. So it's going to be moved to column section. Okay, looks nice. 
Okay, the last thing we need to do here is to edit our title for the form. We'll just name it edit the deal and I'll just make it not as big. Okay, and that looks good. Now we can preview our app, uh, see if everything looks nice. Maybe we want to adjust certain parts, like we want to make it fold a little nicer. And that looks that looks good. Okay. And after that, we can publish our changes. We can use custom domain if it wants, or go with the domain that's provided by Jetit. Okay, and that's our app. Now, if we want to turn this app into a partner sales portal, instead of manual filtering here by the owner, we can do this dynamically and pretty much enable multi-tenancy. And the way we do it here is we go into the users and teams, and we can either invite new users from here or use our API or just import users. There are multiple options. I'll go with inviting my member directly. So this is one of the deal owners. Uh, so I'll send invite and I'll invite him as editor. So he only can access the app in the user mode. Great. And after they accept the invite, we'll be able to use their default properties like email address or name or the team, or we can add custom properties here to then dynamically filter our application by those, pro those properties. So let me show how it can be done. In my deals, if I go to my table inside of the Superbase, I can see that along with the owner's name, I have the owner email, which uniquely identifies this owner. So I can filter by this email and separate data for each owner. So they will see only deals associated with them. So the way I do it here is I go back to my, to my application that I've built and for the deals uh, collection or the deals canvas kind of board, I go here and I click into filters. Okay, those are two filters that we already have for the filter component and I'll add just a third one and I will tell Jet to filter by owner email, owner email equals, and then once again, I dynamically reference this value that we have, the user token. For that, I go to user properties and I can right away see this email address and that's exactly what we need, okay? Now, I logged in as an admin. Obviously, my email address is not in the owner's column in the deals. So what I can do here is to preview and then impersonate a specific person from the team. So right now, I'll just use partner sales manager that I've shared the access to the app to. And I can click here and I will see the filtered view. The filtering is done on the backend side, so it's pretty secure and you can go and apply this dynamic filtering not only for your deals component but for other components. And from there you can extend your app even further. You can add more components here and bind those components to the existing ones or you can go and add more pages here and create multi-page drill downs or you can customize your sign in sign up options so that your external users access your app exactly the way you want them to. And you can even add some automations and create multi-branch, multi-step workflows. And finally, you can share your app securely with your team. So you can either invite them through the email or through Magic Link, and you can set the permissions for each role. You can create multiple roles and you can granularly for each role or team set what exactly they can do on specific pages. For example, uh, can they read, update, or delete? And you also can create public pages. Then you can share a specific page with a public URL. And if you want to build this or pretty much any other app that you need, you can go to jetadmin.io and just sign up for free and start testing and playing with it. All right, I hope it was helpful and thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Bye.